Well, it goes back to 1992 when uh, my wife and I decided we'd have fed up with Sydney and we'd retire to Coffs Harbour. And we uh, purchased a, an astronomical observatory in uh, Middle Boambi, which is just on the next ridge from where the school eventually would appear. Uh, shortly after we arrived, we heard about this plan to have a, an Anglican school almost next door to us, just over the hill. So we kept our eyes on that. Uh, my wife was uh, a former school teacher uh, for many years at St Andrew's Cathedral School. So she had a, uh, to some degree, a, an interest there. She thought possibly the school, if it eventuated, might uh, be interested in it. Nothing happened there, but the point was we, we drove past, we went along that road over there, we saw a vacant area, we knew that was the site of the planned school and we kept our eyes on it as the months rolled by and then eventually when it appeared, uh, quite by coincidence, my wife's former boss, uh, Canon Newth, uh, who'd been the principal at St Andrews Cathedral School for 40 years or something, uh, was interested, actually he was interested in looking through my telescope, uh, but uh, he came up and stayed with us for a few days and uh, I mentioned this school to him, he'd heard of it, but, uh, and much detail concerning it, and I thought, well, I, I can't let him go back to Sydney without having seen it, so I rang Victor Branson up, who of course was the uh, that, then the head, and uh, uh, the three of us got together. Uh, Canon Newth uh, saw the school and uh, met Victor and uh, uh, met me too for the first time. So I guess that was my first uh, contact with the school. That would have been in 1993 I suppose, uh, possibly four. Uh, I think it was in 1998, quite out of the blue, I got a telephone call saying, would you be prepared to serve on the school's council? So I said yes, and in 1998 I regularly attended. Well, I suppose the, uh, uh, not that I, uh, except for one moment, it was all due to me, uh, it was a team effort by a, a very uh, energetic council and of course the staff of the school and of course uh, by no means uh, 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 least of all uh, Victor Branson getting that school established from nothing well virtually I think 57 kids I think on the first day and building it up uh, things could have easily gone wrong mm. uh, and uh, uh, I suppose the thing I'm most pleased about is we were able to, notwithstanding changes in economic conditions and other other things that happened along the way, we were able to go year by year, strength to strength, mm. uh, building up by the time I'd left to uh, something in the order of eleven or twelve hundred pupils and a secure financial position. Well, it's changed from just a, a very small group to a very large group, as you've just described. But it meant, of course, with the ad, added numbers, we were able to do more, many more things and participate in many different ways. We had a strong association with the, the other principal schools in the, in the Anglican Diocese. Uh, uh, that uh, was a help to all the schools, we were able to help others, they helped us. Uh, we even on a, uh, occasion exchanged personnel, sometimes on a temporary and sometimes on a permanent basis. Uh, so it was a cooperative effort and one that I'm pleased to say uh, 
worked successfully from not only from a fa financial or administrative point of view, but I'm sure from a, an educational point of view, and this is the more important aspect of it, an educational point of view, and uh, well, a Christian point of view. Um, it's always been, a, uh, in my mind, a problem that our society has had that unlike the way things were long, long ago in my youth, we don't have any kind of Sunday school system within our denominations. And it's perfectly possible for people to get to school age or indeed graduate from school without knowing anything about the Christian religion, about who Jesus was, uh, who indeed God is. And uh, Bishop Druid College, as I see it, had as one of its prime educational duties not to force that kind of um, material down people's throat, but to make sure they were aware of it and knew it and had the choice available to them of saying, yes, this is the way I want to live. No, well, I can't. I can. I can think of all sorts of little problems we had, uh, <laughs> things that uh, uh, I, I shouldn't even mention, <laughs> that where where we had to hastily uh, fix up people who were offended or upset for various reasons, either within or outside. Uh, that's inevitable in any organisation of this size. You can't please everybody all the time. Uh, but yes, we got there and we were able to avoid the kind of publicity, I think, that private schools tend to attract. Mm. Whether the media has some chip on its shoulder about ch private schools or not, I do not know. But, I mean, just at the moment, the, uh, the episode of Kings and the Kings boys on uh, one of their cadet camps killing a goanna, and that's on the front page of the newspapers. Well, it's that kind of thing we were largely able to avoid and I'm pleased to say uh, I can't remember any occasion when Bishop Druid College got its name on the local or uh, regional press uh, for something that would rather hadn't happened.